As someone who spends quite literally more than 60 hours of productivity within just the past week, which roughly translates to more than 8 hours of working, writing, creating, and researching on my laptop, I could tell you that digital spaces can get cluttered real fast. And in James Clear's book, Atomic Habits, he talked about a specific example of a problem that could arise when you prioritize your goals rather than your systems. The problem is that achieving a goal is only a momentary change. Lifting his example from that book, he said, and I quote, Imagine you have a messy room and you set a goal to clean it. If you summon the energy to tidy up, then you will have a clean room. For now. But if you maintain the same sloppy pack rat habits that led to a messy room in the first place, soon you'll be looking at a new pile of clutter and hoping for another burst of motivation. Now this example doesn't just apply to physical spaces where you see and feel clutter, but it also applies to digital spaces where we spend most of our time in considering the remote and online setup we have now at work or in university. In this video though and on the next ones, I hope to share my own digital organization system and also share a few tips that can hopefully help you build a system to organize your digital spaces. So enough of that chit chat, let's hop right into a tour of my laptop. So as you can see, I am most definitely proud to show you that my desktop is empty. And no, I didn't hide any of the folders nor the files that were here somewhere where you can see because I did actually declutter my laptop a few days ago as part of my end of the semester routine and the reason why I keep my desktop clear of any files is because I rarely see my desktop. Before, I used to have my class schedule pinned to my desktop wallpaper and I also used to have a few folders set up for the semester but honestly, I don't ever get to see my desktop because most of the time I'm working on my browser or on an application. So anything that I place on my desktop would most likely be forgotten. So on my good days, and on my bad ones, I try to keep my desktop clear so I don't end up overlooking important files. Since I spend a great deal of time on my browser, that is actually the first thing that I will show you. Other people use Safari as their default browser, but I've been using Chrome for as far as I can remember. Um, this is where I access my courses, research knowledge databases, and even organize my files. Basically, the bulk of everything I do on my laptop, I do it on my browser. Now, what's great in Google Chrome is you can set up the sites that automatically open on startups. So when you open up Google Chrome, you don't have to manually type in the links to these sites, especially for those that you open quite often because Chrome does it for you already. For me, those sites are Canvas, which is our university's platform for accessing courses and Xtiles, which is actually the sponsor of today's video. Xtiles basically gives the different areas of your life a home in your browser so you can access your personal, academic, and work lives all within a single workspace. So to better show you how Xtiles works, I present to you my workspace. Now I only have two pages, one for my courses and one for weekly planning. You can add more for each aspect of your life if you want or need to, but my goal with my tiles is to minimize the clutter and distractions I have when working with the browser. The thing is, if you don't have Xtiles automatically opening up on startup, you have this search bar right here that can literally take you to the most distracting sites where you'll end up spending four hours of your time without actually getting things done. But with Xtiles, I can see all important and urgent information about my courses and I can see the tasks I intend to accomplish for the week. In this way, I can set my priorities straight and avoid digital distractions. So on my course page, I have tiles for quick notes, reminders, and tasks, and these tiles serve as my inbox for anything that concerns my academics. So if I have anything that I need to take note of during the lecture, I just add them to these tiles so I can process and work on them when I can. Below that, I have a tile for each course, and these tiles show Zoom details and links to each course page. Now, these are the only pieces of information that I access most often about my courses, along with opening up our university platform, but of course, you can resize each tile and customize each content to whatever fits your organization needs. Meanwhile, on my weekly planning page, I have a tile for a brain dump, which is where I write down the tasks that I need to schedule for the week, an inbox tile similar to the one on my course page, a tile for each day of the week, so I have a weekly overview as well as a list of my tasks for each day, a next week tile for tasks that I need to schedule the following week, 
and a sometime later tile for tasks that I need to schedule even further into the future. Aside from text, you can also add an image, an audio file, a document, or a web bookmark in each tile. So as you can see, the entire Xtiles workspace can be customizable to how you want your workspace to work and appear. All pages you create on Xtiles can also be shared with your friends, classmates, and colleagues so you can collaborate with them in a single platform. Xtiles is also available on your laptops, on your phones, and even as a Chrome extension, and all workspaces you create automatically sync across all your devices. What's great is Xtiles special offer for students and educators so you can access the app for free with no limits for five years. So you can use the link in the description to give Xtiles a try. Now, let's move on to my bookmarks bar, which has been really helpful because with the university, important links can easily pile up and one way or another, you'll end up forgetting about half the links that you need. So with this set up, I can easily access important links to the websites and tools that I use often for university. I have also organized my bookmarks into folders. So I have one for university platforms because a few of our courses are in Canvas and a few of them are in Moodle. And the thing is, these are actually custom links to our university that I end up forgetting all the time. So I've bookmarked these sites here to avoid that. And I also have another folder for all productivity tools that I often use for academic tasks. Now for extensions, I actually have quite a few ones on here. Um, Weva lets you directly highlight and annotate on any article or web page so you can save and organize important information that may come in handy later, especially when you're reading or researching and you find yourself being buried among the 150 different tabs that you have open. This pocket extension lets you store articles and any web content for reading later on. Grammarly works as a writing assistant when I'm writing on my browser, whether that be sending an email through Gmail or writing a paper on Google Docs. MyBib is a convenient citation generator in case you're writing an academic paper so you can avoid losing your references, which I'm sure has happened happened to most of us, unfortunately. Teleparty is a streaming extension that my friends and I use for watching Netflix together. Colorpick Eyedropper, which helps you select and identify color values from any web page, particularly useful for when you're designing posters, infographics, and any creative piece. And Momentum, which is my default page when opening up a new tab on my browser. Now that we're done with my web browser, let's move on to the apps that I have on my laptop. All apps that I use regularly, I place them on my dock. All others, especially system apps that Apple has decided to download without my permission, I store them on my launch pad. So on my dock, I have Finder, which I barely use anymore as my primary storage space and organizer because the thing is, university files take up so much of my storage that I end up not having enough space to work on current projects. And at the end of every semester, I upload all of these files on Google Drive anyway. So honestly, I don't see the point of storing these academic files on my laptop anymore when I could use the storage space to work on current projects instead. So now I use Finder mainly for storing in progress projects. Next is day one, which is my journaling app, Zoom, of course, for online meetings, Microsoft Word, which I also barely use anymore because I have transitioned to using Google Docs in the past semester, but I still keep Microsoft Word on my laptop because there are certain files that work best on this app. Anki is a digital flashcards tool where you can actively recall your learning materials and also practice spaced repetition. Adobe Photoshop is where I design all graphics for academic tasks or for my channel. Spotify, which I only ever use on my laptop when I'm doing mindless tasks because I use it for playing lo-fi music on my laptop. Evernote, which is where I write down all outlines and scripts for my videos. Some people use Evernote for note-taking. I haven't used Evernote for note-taking, but using it as a writing tool so far, I can say it works great. Next is Microsoft Excel, which again, I personally only use a few times, but similar to Microsoft Word, I still keep it on my dock because some academic files work best on Excel. The Photos app I use for storing desktop wallpapers. I don't sync my photos across all my devices because I found that the photos I have on my phone, I don't really need them on my iPad nor my laptop, so I just find it easy 
easier to compartmentalize my photos this way. The calendar app is what I use for time blocking my weekly schedule. Now this one is synced to the calendar app I have on my phone and on my iPad, so I get all notifications on important blocks of time across all my devices. Microsoft PowerPoint is where I design a few graphics and presentation templates for university. Um, a little trivia, during the start of my channel, I used to use Microsoft PowerPoints for all graphics. Honestly, Photoshop can feel overwhelming as a non-professional graphic artist, so having Microsoft PowerPoint on hand and accessible just makes it easier to access tools that are simple and straightforward when designing graphics. Adobe Illustrator is similar to Photoshop. I use this one for designing graphics. The Stickies app is what I use as my inbox. Now, as you can see, these are still my deliverables during the finals week. Um, during that time, my Notion was a mess and I honestly couldn't seem to get a clear grip on all my deadlines so I used the Stickies app to list down all pending tasks and reminders that I have yet to accomplish. The Notes app is where I store all temporary notes for my university, my channel, and other miscellaneous areas of my life. Final Cut Pro, which is my video editing software. The Messenger app, which could be the only social media app I have on my laptop. Um, as much as I want to devoid my laptop of any distractions, I need to keep my Messenger app on my dock because this is where I communicate with my group mates and sometimes even receive important messages from my professors. Notion is my primary workspace. I made an in-depth tour of my Notion workspace in my last video, so be sure to check that out if you haven't yet and if you want to see my personal and university dashboards. But basically, when I open up my laptop, the very first apps that I open are my web browser and my Notion workspace. Without Notion, I probably wouldn't have a clear plan to go through my day. Finally, let's talk about my digital organization system. Now, similar to James Clear's example and the difference between prioritizing your goals versus your systems, there is no point no point in decluttering your laptop if you don't have a system that you can actually stick to. You might momentarily have a clean and organized laptop for now, but if you maintain the same system and habits that led to a cluttered laptop in the first place, you'll end up finding yourself in the same situation, hoping for another burst of motivation to sort through and organize through your files again, which most likely isn't going to happen anytime soon. So when it comes to organizing your laptop, you want to make sure that each and every file in your system has as a whole. You may still use your desktop or downloads folder for anything temporary and I would like to emphasize on the word temporary. So say you're downloading a few files or creating a document that hasn't been assigned to a home or a folder, that should be the only instances when you use these folders. But the idea is to file things as soon as you create or receive them. You don't want files to be randomly sitting across your desktop or downloads folder permanently because sooner or later you'll end up forgetting, misplacing, or even accidentally accidentally deleting these files. This leads me to my next point, which is to create a structure that fits your workflow best. Now, this structure should make it easier for you to find folders and files, and this structure should make sense to you. Unless, of course, if you're working with someone else. In my case, again, I don't use Finder anymore as my primary storage space. I only use it to store current projects that are still in progress because now I use Google Drive as my storage for all academic files files and I use my hard drive for all content and YouTube related files. I'm going to talk about the organization system I have for each one, starting with my Google Drive. So as you can see, I have organized my academic files according to their respective academic year and semester. And I have also added a number enclosed in brackets in front of the folder name because this makes it easier to have the folders in the order I want them to be. Within each semester's folder, I have a folder for each course and within each each one, I have a folder for course files. This includes the course syllabus and reference books and a folder for each module or week. I organize my folders into a hierarchy with the most general or inclusive folder being the first one, leading to the more specific folders which best represent my academic files. When it comes to creating a structure though, you don't wanna use too many folders nested within each one because you'll end up opening too many folders when trying to find something, which can be annoying. So at most, I try to maintain two nested folders. For my hard drive, I sort and organize my YouTube files by date. So I have the year, month, day of publishing in front 
and the name of the video as the folder name. It's also important that you create a consistent naming convention for both folders and files. So avoid using vague terms like research paper or submission draft one. It honestly makes me so frustrated when I see my friends naming their files in that way. Remember, it should be clear what is inside each folder and file without needing to open it. Once you have a structure in place, learn to stick with it and be consistent with it. It can be very tempting to save your files quickly without sorting them into their respective folders nor renaming them into your naming convention. But if you don't commit to your organization system, you'll end up back in the mess of files that you began in. Once you create or receive a file, take a moment to rename accordingly and to file it in the right folder. A few seconds of your time will make a huge difference later on and your future self will definitely thank you. So that is a wrap for my digital organization system. I hope you were able to learn something from this video. Thank you so, so much for sticking around and I will see you guys in my next one. Bye!